church, to you, my sisters and brothers in Christ, creation. Man, it is again good to be here. I'm thankful to God for this opportunity to uh, preach to his people that are close to people who are not so close. And man, we've been trying to get some understanding of what God may be doing in this time in history, the stage in history. The church should be praying with all that's going on in our world and the devastation that's taking place not only in America but all over the world. Man, I, I believe the folk in Italy would be all right if you prayed for them. All right. Man, I know the doctrine is supposed to be America first, but I don't think the folk uh, in Europe or in Britain mind if you pray for them. Right. Man, certainly don't mind them praying for me Amen. and us. We need God's help right now. And so Amen. think the times that at times can be so terrible that you you lose your bearings. Sometimes God's people lose their bearings and in order to find your place or where, where God's intentions are, you, you have to read your Bible. Right. You need not be blind with regard to what God is doing. I'll say this about this, this time that we're in, living in. We are a New Testament church. And man, every church in America it stands open in the name of Christ as a New Testament church. Uh, but to understand what we're living in, what we're living through, sometimes you have to go to the Old Testament because God gives insight and he gives uh, uh, intellect to his people that we may not be blind as we go through this life. And so to gain a deeper understanding of what, what God might be up to, let us go to the book of Exodus chapter 23 beginning at verse 20. Exodus chapter 23 verse 20. Well, thank you for standing for the reading and reverencing of God's word. Exodus 23 and 20. Hear what God says. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him, and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them 
quite break down the images. And here it is. Look at verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness, say sickness. sickness. I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. You may be seated in the presence of God. And ye shall, verse 25, and ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. This morning, I'm going to tag this text for which to preach. I'm going to talk uh, from this subject for just a few moments. Three things God wants to do for his people. All right. Three things God wants to do for his people. It it is not necessary uh, during this presentation to withhold the points of the text because it's laid out for us uh, as we read the instruction that's given to God's people is that they shall serve the Lord. And because of that service, because we meet that end of the deal, God says, this is what he's going to do. He says, if you serve me, I will do three things. I will bless thy bread, I will bless thy water, and I'll give you good health. You know, as, as Christians, we, we want to believe that, that God is going to give us more than what he says he is. There is no guarantee that if you serve God that you're going to get all the things on your wish list. Right. One thing God does guarantee his people is the blessing of bread, the blessing of water, right. and the blessing of good health. Right. May not ever live in the house that you want to live in. But if you belong to God, you can count on, if you serve, you can count on the blessing of bread, the blessing of water, and the blessing of good health. May not, may not, may not get that mink coat, may not ever get that dream car that you desire to have, may never, ever get the accoutrements of life that you think you deserve, but those that serve God can count on three things. You count on the blessing of bread, right. the blessing of water, and the blessing of good health. Wow. And I, I, I'm telling you that the older I get, I see the value of these three things. To, to even have bread uh, uh, means that God has given you resources to buy bread. You can't get bread for free. So if you got bread, you bought bread. And so so uh, as we live each and every day, we have the blessing of bread. Uh, we have the blessing of water. Water uh, is important. I just like to throw this in here to the different governments that talk about acceptable levels of toxins in water, acceptable levels of lead in the water. According uh, to the CDC, there are no acceptable levels of lead consumption. And so uh, it, is, it is the government's uh, responsibility to provide good water. And I, I'm thankful, sisters and brothers, that God gives the believers, those that serve him, we count on the blessing of bread and the blessing 
water. But I, I, I see one more in the text. Those of us that serve him, he promises that, that, that you can count on good Hell, he, he didn't say you were going what going to get sick, but 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 health wise, you're you're doing okay, even if it is through medication, even if it is through therapy, you're doing okay. You have the blessing of good health. Yeah, yeah, that's what my grandmother used to say. A portion of my health. Man, somebody be satisfied with just. Somebody that's on a sick bed this morning would be satisfied with just the potion of, of good health. And so we see, we see the promises of God. But you got to, you got to, you got to thank God for these provisions because you got to have bread, you got to have water, and you need. Good health. Right. Well, 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 what happens if the bread is in a rut mm. and the water becomes contaminated my Lord, my Lord. and my health mm. becomes suspect? Jesus. What what do I do? You got then you gotta get into this text because you can't just read verse 25 by by itself. Huh? Because verse 25 begins with the word and. So you got to look at what came before the word and. Exodus 23 talks about the behavior of God's people. Remember, they had been captive or slaves to the Egyptians. God sent a prophet by the name of Moses to emancipate God's people. And, and it was God's intention to give them instruction and not abandon them as they were led to that place of promise, the, the promised land. And, and what we pick up in the story is God's instruction to his people uh, to ensure them that he had nothing but the best in mind for them. That on their journey, as, as, they, did, as they would sojourn through the wilderness, that he, he had nothing but but well intentions for, for them. But, but it, it's not one-sided. It wasn't God going to do this without any effort from his people. They would indeed have a role to play if they wanted the blessing of bread, if they wanted the blessing of water, if they wanted the blessing of good health. God was going to do his part, but it was up to them his people to do their part. I love God. God says, I'm going to send you some help so you can do your part. Uh, and what, what we got to do with this text, sisters and brothers, is, is see ourselves as God's people. That's the only way you can receive this instruction. You got to see yourself as God's people and that he loves us enough to send us some help. Look at verse 20. And, and that they were soldiering through the wilderness, look at what God says. Behold, I send an angel before thee. He says, I'm going to send you some help. Right. And his job is to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. I, I love this about God because uh, God knows that where he wants us, uh, our final destination to be, he knows that it's a difficult journey to get us there. So he sends some help. He sends his people an angel. I love it. To keep them in the way. You think God has sent the church anything to keep us in the way? 
she has. He's given us this book, huh, to keep us in the way. He's given us preachers to keep us in the way. Instruction to keep us in the way. He said, and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Look, look what he says about this angel. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. Yeah. I, I love this, uh, this word because it, it tells God's people how to respond to what he sings. He tells them, huh, don't, don't play with him. Obey his voice. Provoke him not. For he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. There are some things that God prepares for his people that are hard. There are hard instructions. Some things in life are unforgiving. Huh? And so we have, we have to make sure that we're on the right side. But look at what happened. We, we see what the angel does. We, we, we see what the task of the angel is. <clears throat> what are we to do? If thou shalt, verse 22, if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and, and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies. If you take heed to what the angel says, if you listen to the word, if you listen to the instructions of God, God says, your enemy will be my enemy. How many see sickness as an enemy? Right. Hmm? I love this. If it's an enemy of yours, the word says, it's an enemy of God. Right. And an adversary unto thine enemies. Adversaries. Look at this angel. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee into tough places unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. God says, I'll cut them off. Huh? I love this because God is telling us in the text, you, you, you obey the word. You obey the instruction and I'll work behind the scenes to keep you protected. I love this because the job of this angel, the Bible says in verse 23, my angel shall go before thee. Before you get into the trouble, before you get sick, you need to know that my angel has been there. Ah. Okay, verse 24, you think, you think we have problems with this? times that we live in. Look what he says to his people. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works. But thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Huh? You, think we have, you think we have issues with serving other gods? Huh? You can you can you can desire a good economy, right. huh? but you're not to covet the economy. Nothing wrong with, 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 with liking money. It's the love of money right. that is the root of all evil. There are, there are things that in life that desire to be your God. Your job, Satan would desire your job to be your God. Or uh, your income to be your God. God says don't go into, don't fall for it. Don't serve it. Don't go after the works. But, but when you have opportunity, overthrow it. Tear it down. Those things that desire to be gods in our life and in our civilization. You know, hate can be a God, huh? It can be a God when it stands in opposition to love, huh? And how many times have we shown strife and hatred towards our brothers and sisters? You gotta be careful of what we allow to set itself up as an idol in 
our lives. God says, if you, if you follow the instruction and, and allow yourself to be led, he says, I will bless you. If you don't, if you obey what I've laid out in verses 20 through 24, God says, you can count on the blessing of bread. Right. Huh? God says, you, you can count on the blessing of water. You can count on the blessing of good health. If you serve him. So that's, that's, that's what you have to ask yourself, sisters and brothers. Uh, we're, we're living in a time where we, we, we have the promise of God, but bread is being interrupted. Uh, before a couple of weeks ago, you could go to the store and get whatever you had on your mind. Hmm? But the blessing of bread has been interrupted. Huh? Whether you know it or not, sisters and brothers, the blessing of water is interrupted. Yeah. New school, South Oak Cliff, uh, uh, almost $60 million in renovation. Kept the old pipes. Yeah. Huh? Lead still in the school. Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. All that is just putting lipstick on a pig. Yeah. <laughs> well. Yeah. We, the, the water, you, you hear what, what's going on in Michigan? How the, the, the water had become contaminated uh, to, uh, through. Uh, not servicing the pipes, not updating the pipes, not keeping maintenance on, on the pipes. The water uh, uh, became contaminated. The blessing of water has been interrupted. Huh? What, what, what has happened to our hell? Huh? God has sent something not only to this country, but he sent something to the world. You know, sisters and brothers, that, 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 that a terrorist has nothing on the terror of God. Oh, See, terror, terrorists can go knock down a building. They can kill a, 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 a couple thousand folk uh, in, in a building. But God can go by every country mm -hmm. huh, and touch who he want to. Oh, huh? and, and he don't care. He don't care. What the administration said. Huh? He don't care if the president uh, said April 15 folk going to be infected. Mm. Huh? Now it's 115,000 folk mm. that have been affected. Right. Huh? God can send something through to this place that don't care about your bank account. Mm -hmm. huh? I, I look, about, look at all about it and who's getting sick. Huh? Huh? Folk that don't know nobody okay. know it's getting sick. Yeah. And folk that everybody know yeah. Yeah, yeah. is getting sick. Right. Don't care if you are male hmm. or female. That's right. Don't care if you're tall or short. Don't care if you're fat or skin. Right. Huh? They don't even care about where you live. That's right. Huh? God has sent something to remind us that the blessing of bread, the blessing of water, the blessing of good health is contingent upon us serving him. You don't, can't count on the blessing of bread if you don't serve. Can't count on the blessing of water if you don't serve it. Can't count on the blessing of good health if you don't serve it. So, we want to look at the times that we're in and think God is angry with us. Uh, 
God might be trying to tell us something. If God were here to talk to you, he would simply tell you to read your Bible. You want to know what's on my mind? God says, I don't have to say it again. I look at the church and what she stands for and how she walks and how she conducts itself. There are times, sisters and brothers, that the church looks just like the world. Hmm? Sometimes, sisters and brothers, the church uh, resembles everything that's taking place in the world. But God will remind us this morning, sisters and brothers, that we'll, we'll have to go back and receive the instruction. That we have to follow that angel. Yeah. And, and when I see this angel in the text, it resembles a lot like Jesus Christ. Right. Ah, uh, this angel, sisters and brothers, has characteristics and the markings of Jesus Christ. And I'm thankful to God that they had an angel in the Old Testament. But we have an angel in the New Testament. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And I want to remind you that he wants to bless you. But in order to receive the blessings of Jesus Christ, uh -huh, you got to serve the Lord. You got to serve the Lord until you die. And if you serve him, you can count on the blessing of praise. If you serve the Lord, you can count on the blessing of water. If you serve the Lord, you can count on good health and God being with you until you die. And so the question is, is not will you worry about the disease? The question is, will you serve the Lord? Because the blessings of life is in serving, serving the Lord. I don't know about you this morning, but I don't need a new car. But I need the blessing of bread. I don't need a new house, but I need the blessing of raw. And I don't know about you, but I don't need a job. I thank God I got a job. But what I really need is good health. And I thank the Lord for what he's given me by way of my health. I thank the Lord for the body that he's given me. I thank the Lord for the blessing of praise. Blessing of water, the blessing of good health. I don't, I don't see a Lexus in the text, it's all right. it's all right. but I do see bread. Thank you, Lord. Huh? And I'm telling you, God is so good. God is so good because. You know, you talk about those that are being touched during this time. God is blessing folk too. Huh? People still getting checks. Huh? People still receiving resources. Huh? Some folk are making money and not even having to go to work. Huh? Let me tell you, God is able to bless you. He can bless you past your circumstances. I don't see a diamond ring in the text, but I do see the blessing of water. Hmm? And right now, water is 
more valuable than a diamond ring. Thank you. Hmm. I don't see a new address in the text, but I do see the blessing of good health. And how many of you know that's a blessing? Yes. It's a blessing, sisters and brothers, to be able to put one foot in front of the other. You ask somebody that's in a wheelchair, huh? It's good health, a blessing. You ask somebody that's in a nursing home, having to be cared for by others, it is health. It's a, it's a blessing. So what does God guarantee his people, huh? Live this life, you can make it without the car of your dream. But you gotta eat. I don't care how healthy you are, you still got it. Yeah, he says, I'll give you that. The blessing, I'll give you the water, I'll give you good health. He said, but just, just like I give it, I can interrupt it. Yeah. I can have everyday norms be interrupted. God said, I can, I can fix it so that you can't even go buy chicken. Huh? God said, you don't think I can do it? Watch me. Watch me. So, three things we can count on. God is bread, water, and good health. We know his position. The question is, will you serve him? How do I, how do I serve him? Pastor Nolan, but a servant, you got to get on his team. Yeah, and it's not, it's not like the NBA or the NFL or Major League Baseball where you have to be drafted on the team. You know, if you have to be drafted, it means somebody's got to pick you. Huh? And... <laughs> Ain't nothing about us worth picking. So God, God lets us choose whether or not we want to be on his side. If you desire to go with God this morning, you don't know him in the pardon of your sins. Romans 10 and 9 says, If thou shalt confess with the mouth of the Lord Jesus, you shall believe within thine heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Salvation is yours simply for the asking. God wants you to be his people, and he wants to be your God. And then, maybe you are saved, but you desire to respond in terms of your growth, your church membership. You don't, you don't have a regular place of worship. And I'm telling you, that's, that's where your spiritual growth is. It's, it's not in television ministry. It's not in listening to it on the radio, you need to get involved in a local church. If you don't have a local church, paradise is the place to be. Pastor will lead you, people will love you, where we engage in the business of growing the kingdom of God. If that is you, if you desire to be a member of this church, just make it known. And if you're on the Facebook page, uh, make it known, just say, question mark, and we'll get in touch with you some kind of way uh, in order that you may have opportunity to respond. And then, Finally, those of you who just need prayer, those of you who desire to invite God into your circumstances, I want to pray for you. I want to bring you before God, bring your circumstances before God, believing that the answer is in Him and in Him alone. And so, if you fall into one of those categories, want to pray, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. Uh, you know what the desires are. Uh, you know who's listening. And you know what an individual needs. And so as people desire to respond, God, make yourself available. We pray, God, that this church be available. First, those that don't know you in the part of their sin. And then, God, those that desire to grow up under the leadership and direction church. Remember them. And then God, those of us just need you this morning to come before you asking that you would hear our cries. Forgive us of our sins. God, that we might be found 
worthy in your presence. We pray, Master, God, that you would entertain our desires, but we first say thank you because you've been good, you've been wonderful, you've been kind, you've been loving toward us. And so, God, thank you for bread. Thank you for water. Thank you for good health. Oh, poor say good health, but thank you for what you've done on top of that. Thank you for the house that we live in, the car that we drive, the job that we go to. Thank you, God, for the benefits that we have. Oh, we're so grateful. We're grateful, God, because you've been good to us. Oh, but we need you. We need you because this life is getting tough. The bread is interrupted. The water, God, is questionable. And our health is suspect. So I'm praying right now, God, that you would bless us in a mighty way. That you would bless, bless the bread supply. God, that no one would go hungry during this time. That all resources would be available, particularly to your people. And then, God, for those of us who have a little extra, give us the heart, mind, and desire to reach out and help others. Pray, God, not only for bread, thank you for the water. I pray, God, issues that different municipalities have across the country. God, that you would clean up the water supply. Then, God, bless our health. Bless first those who are sick, those who are afflicted, not only with the coronavirus, God, but the normal afflictions that carry folk to the emergency room, the normal afflictions that carry us and see us back and forth at the doctor's office. I'm praying not only for those who are sick with the virus, but those of us who are sick with all manner of afflictions. We pray, God, for the devastation, the death that's taking place. I pray, God, that you would bless us to come out of it. Help us to learn the Lord lessons, God, but bring us out of it. God, that we might be able to bless your name. We look to you for our help, our hope. Those who are absent from us, God, remember them. Remember their afflictions. Remember the burden. Remember their lack of resources. Bless them all in a very special way. Remember those who are caring for the sick. Remember the incarcerated. And those who are administered and sealed out the incarcerated. Bless them all in a very special way. Give us what we need that we might be able to stand for more than anything. We pray that the outcome of it all be in accordance with your will. For you are our strength and our redeemer. It's in Jesus' name we ask it all. And all the children of God said amen. Amen. Again, we look forward to uh, Wednesday night. Uh, we're probably uh, going to record it and uh, uh, send you the link uh, some kind of way. But we'll get it all done uh, and communicate it to you uh, as we move forward. We thank God again for all of you. Thank our musicians for 
being here. Deacons as well, special ops, thank you uh, so much. God bless you, may keep you, uh, is our prayer. Uh, there's nothing else, we're standing. God, we thank you for this day and how you blessed us to see the role that we played in. Thank you for your word because it is insight to what we're going through. Are we serving you is the question. So God, help us all to do in inventory of our lives. Get our business fixed in order that we might be compliant with you. And receive the blessing and the expectation of the blessing of bread, the blessing of water, and the blessing of good health. Now, fathers, we leave this place, but never from your presence. May the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, may the rest rule and abide with us henceforth and forevermore. All the children of God said, amen. 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 God bless you, baby. Keep you as our prayer. You are.